Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And it's time for another edition of the Weekly Track Roundup, where I go over what I felt were the worst and the best tracks of the week. That's what it is. You know what it is. Let's do it. Let's go over the tracks first off. A couple of shout-outs. One to our sponsor, the good people over at The Ridge. Still making these nice, nifty, awesome, minimalist, metal-plated wallets. F-R-I-D blocking. Fits nicely into your front pocket. And you can get 10% off if you use the link down below and use the promo code MILLIN. Also, our uh, Turntable Lab link is uh, down below. We get kickback from that. Our Patreon page as well, where you can get access to some cool monthly bonus content. And uh, worst tracks of the week. We only have a couple. Only have a couple. A couple songs really stood out to me this week as being stinkers. One, uh, the Gershwin version of Lana Del Rey's Summertime version. Uh, yeah, the mediocre cover has now been redone, so it's more dramatic and filled with orchestral instrumentation, and it sounds awful. Um, yeah, you know, it uh, honestly is... As disappointed as I was with the, uh, you know, original cover that it didn't really take that many creative liberties. This just seems like off the deep end. Uh, but then Bleacher's Chinatown featuring Bruce Springsteen. Wow. Um, you invite the boss onto a track that is mixed this poorly and has the vocals and his vocals this buried. You're, you're really... Uh, I don't know. We we need a reprioritization of uh, wh- whatever our approach is going into the song. <laughs> going into the song, this is really like a mess. It, which which is sad because Jack usually has some really good production on other people's records and and uh, drops at least some strong singles under the name Bleachers. You know, I mean, you, usually it's the singles off Bleachers records that are the strongest. But uh, this is. Uh, uh, really going against that grain. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the songs that I was kind of on the fence with, but still wanted to shout out, because uh, maybe they had some qualities that I thought were cooler, or you might like them more than me. Let's see. Uh, we have this new one from uh, uh, Ziani over here. Hmm. Yeah. Skinwalker. It's a it's a, an industrial banger with uh, some really dark vibes. Uh, new, fresh cutting edge electronics and some yelpy abrasive vocals too yeah, might need to censor that cover as well uh, we also have a, a shamika the shamika that fiona apple sang about in shamika yes she is a musician as well and she came out with her own track titled shamika said featuring fiona apple and it's kind of like a, a narrative thematic extension of the original shamika track and it's a uh, quite cute it's endearing it's sweet I like it quite a bit. Check it out. It's a little rough around the edges, yes, but uh, uh, it's it's a you know cool addition to the Shamika lore. So if you love that uh, Fiona Apple record, don't miss this one. Don't miss it. Uh, then we have a new one from Shame. Kind of sounded like a boilerplate post-punk to me, but uh, the, the performance was there. Energy was there. Can't deny that. Uh, fans of the band, check out the new track. Uh, new remix from Rina Sawayama for Bad Friend, End of the World, doing the remix over here. Uh, I like the groove. I like how peppy it is, but I feel like uh, uh, the very chipper and chipmunked vocals and uh, just all the high-pitched synths uh, didn't really do it uh, as much of a service as I, as I think it could have. But uh, still, you know, like I said, groovy listen. A uh, new one from uh, The No Twist. <clears throat> it's a, a very sad and endearing little ballad with some rough lo-fi production that has a lot of cool textures in it. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Following that one, here is a track from Baby Gucci P. Coat. He's got a new EP out that you should uh, probably peep if you've been into his stuff up until this point. While I do like that this track reveals a lot about him personally and shows an emotional side that he doesn't often deliver on his tracks, uh, structurally it's not one of his stronger songs. You know, structurally I think it's a little bit of a mess, but, uh, you know, it's it's a side of baby that we don't hear or see often, so, you know, I certainly give it props for that. 
And uh, over here, one more from Cloud Nothings. They have a new record on the way as well. And this new teaser slash single, The Spirit Of, is pretty quaint. I'm liking the peppy guitars on this one and sort of how rough around the edges and wild the recording and performance is. So uh, peep that one too. And let's move into the tracks that I thought were uh, the best, the ones that really rocked my world this week. Ba-bam, bam, ba-bam, bam. Uh, first off, first off, first off, first off. First one being, uh, ooh, this new one from Tierra Whack, Peppers and Onions. Like, not only does, does this one have good flows, standout bars, quality beat too. I'm liking the and the whistles. I think that's really cute. But also, good song structure, strong hook, stuff that uh, Whack doesn't often pay as much attention to as I think she should. But uh, hopefully more tracks are... Uh, you know, as uh, uh, methodically put together as this one, I think this is a move in the right direction. This, uh, this I think, is one of her best songs, period. Soul Glow. Uh, this new EP, this track comes off of, which is the uh, uh, the opening track, Quietly Do the Right Thing. is some of the most savage rip roar in punk music I've heard in a while. This shit tears ass. Check it out, check it out, check it out. It's, it's uh, fantastic. The vocals are insane, and uh, the drums go pretty hard, too. Peep it. Uh, slow tie, NHS. Th this one's a, sl a sad tie number. It's one of the sadder numbers I think he's ever put out. Uh, quite an emotional number. And uh, I don't know. I dig it. I like it when slow tie kind of goes down these uh, dark, you know, mental avenues that he does here. Uh, it's a little disheveled at points, you know, a little uh, uh, messy in terms of structure and delivery, but uh, uh, still emotionally potent. And I think uh, one more time, one of his more powerful tracks. Uh, Nas, Falling Stars Flying from, uh, you know, Between the World and Me, original track for the soundtrack. It's uh, got a pretty, uh, I, I guess I'll say, a, a cinematic instrumental. Uh, Nas's bars are uh, pretty moving as well. You know, obviously, uh, he's talking a lot about uh, uh, the struggle, as it were, on this one. And I think uh, a lot of his lines hit pretty hard here. And, uh, you know, he's still got it. You know, I, I think he's really kind of bringing that uh, King's Disease energy and extending it a little bit on this one. He's got a lot to say. He's got kind of like that, you know, uh, sensei type perspective. And he's just kind of uh, telling it, telling it like it is from his uh, from his worldview. Uh, we also have a new one from Sean Mendez and Justin Bieber. Yes, uh, I did not anticipate liking this, but Monster actually the, the title of the song Monster has some decent production. A good Justin Bieber appearance, and the song overall is an interesting reflection on popularity and fame, uh, with Justin Bieber kind of going in about his, uh, you know, progression and come up and when he came into the industry and how he, um, I guess, uh, you know, faced some obstacles personally as a, you know, result of the industry and fame and so on and so forth. It's a pretty interesting track, pretty interesting track. Uh, Marina formerly Marina and the Diamonds, and just now just Marina, Man's World. I don't want to live in a man's world anymore. It's got a solid message. Good hook, too. A few points that I think are maybe a little overproduced, but uh, I think it's one of her strongest songs. I'm digging it. I'm liking it. It's a good tune. I'm fucking with it. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> so one of the few real true blue bangers from this Internet Money record, uh, Lemonade, now has uh, a Latin remix version of it, which I, I guess is is cool. Uh, check it out. You know, I, I think it goes uh, almost as hard as the original. It's still pretty good, and uh, you know, the addition of Anwell AA and all that is a uh, uh, pretty sweet. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it out. All right, a new one from Kitten over here, which I think is one of their best tracks ever. What year are we in? Uh, it's an interesting. Aesthetically, uh, you know, like an 80s rock throwback that's uh, uh, kind of pining for some of the more classic days of rock music. It's uh, pretty interesting in that way, and it's got a strong tune to it as well. Good vocal performance as well. Um, liking it. Liking it a lot. Shout out to Kitten. Again, I, th I think one of the best tracks they've put out uh, in a while. A new one from Kieran J. Callanan, uh, Australian singer and songwriter provocateur uh, you're gonna miss me when i'm gone single is obviously referencing back to his uh, little arias incident he's still kind of on that 
Uh, you know, there was quite a bit of him addressing that immediately after the fact on his covers album, after that, and, and now this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty uh, moving uh, little 80s synth pop-ish ballad with a lot of drama behind it. Good vocal performance as well. Um, interested to hear what else he'll kind of be going into topically with his new stuff. But, uh, you know, interesting that this is uh, still something that he's he's kind of, uh, uh, you know, thinking about. It's just kind of on his mind. Moving on from there, a new one from Boldy James. Digging on this new track from over, over here from him. And uh, uh, production from none other than, and, and you know, keep in mind, I, I've not really been a big Boldy James fan in the past, but Real Bad Man on production and Stove God Cooks on the track as well, who I've heard a little bit from before and his uh, verse has Im- uh, like impressed me more here than uh, in, in other points on Okada stuff. Thousand Pills is the name of the track. It's got really creative production and uh, some pretty grimy druggy bars from Boldy James. I, I know that's usually his MO, but a lot of the time his somewhat monotone delivery underwhelms me, but I like the uh, uh, very cartoony and alternative and colorful beat that he's on here. And, and I'm hoping that uh, Real Bad Man continues to bring that type of production for Boldy too, because I don't know, it's, it's a little Mad Lib-esque, but uh, not, not feeling like a ripoff or anything like that, you know? It feels a little Mad Lib-ish in a good way. Uh, another cover from Bill Callahan and, uh, of course, Bonnie Prince Billy. This one being a Steely Dan cover. God, they're just dropping all these covers. And they've been a little hit or miss. You know, the the Billie Eilish one wasn't exactly it, in my opinion. (laughs) But their take on Steely Dan's uh, Deacon Blues over here with Bill McKay is uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's a a nice uh, little low-key rendition. I like it quite a bit. Uh, James Blake doing a cover as well on here. We got a lot of covers this week. Um, <clears throat> Roberta Flack on this one, and it is a stunning, uh, you know, stripped back piano ballad version of the first time I ever saw your face. It is tear inducing. It's really tear inducing. Powerful cover. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Lovely. Wonderful. And that's going to be it for the weekly track roundup. You're the best. Hopefully you got some good recommendations out of this video. Remember, once again, they're all linked down below with the other stuff that I told you earlier, too. And uh, you're the best. Anthony Fantano, James Blake, Weekly Track Roundup, forever.